on Monday the 13th of November 2017. The Coordination of Associations and Individuals for Freedom of Conscience, also known as the CAP, hosted an event at the United Nations office in Geneva, Switzerland. The event was focused on reflecting upon the difficulties and challenges facing religious communities in Pakistan, with an emphasis on the draconian anti-Ahmadiyya laws and blasphemy laws that have been used to persecute religious communities. The event featured representatives of international NGOs and various UN missions in attendance. Speakers at the event included Sir Iftikhar Ayaz, Chairman on the International Human Rights Committee. What can we say about a country which has enacted ordinances like the Ordinance 20, where specifically under the laws of the country, under the penal code of the country, Ahmadis are mentioned very, very clearly that if they claim to be Muslims, they will be hanged. And as you have just heard, three people were just sentenced to death just a couple of months ago. Dr. Aaron Rhodes, president of the Forum for Religious Freedom Europe. We are not representing any government or political party or partisan movement. And our job is to try to find out what's the truth about human rights compliance around the world, about human rights violations. We're not against anybody. We are simply trying to help people enjoy their freedom of religion and other fundamental freedoms. <clears throat> and I'm listening to the event, the, the, the discussion during the UPR uh, of Pakistan this morning. And I have to say, uh, they made the, 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 the delegation from Pakistan, they made it sound like Pakistan is a utopia. There aren't any problems there. Mahmoud Ahmed, the General Secretary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Lawyers Association USA. Ahmadi Muslims are told that they must concede that they are not Muslims before they are permitted to exercise the right to vote. When an Ahmadi tries to register to vote, he or she is confronted with an option of declaring his or her faith. You have to declare your faith before you're entitled to vote. And the options they have are to either declare themselves to be Muslim, in which case they must execute a declaration under oath denouncing their own beliefs. The declaration states that Ahmadis are not Muslim and that their prophet is not a prophet. And the alternative they have is to register as non-Muslim, register as an Ahmadi thereby conceding that their beliefs are not those of Muslims. And so they are placed in an impossible position. They have to either renounce their religious beliefs or forfeit their right to elect the officials who will represent them. And Basir Naveed from the Asian Human Rights Commission. A special message was also played from Dr. Ahmed Shahid, UN Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Religion, and messages of support were also received from Jim Shannon MP Chair of the UK All-Party Parliamentary Group for International Freedom of Religion or Belief, and Siobhan McDonough, MP, Chair for the All-Party Parliamentary Group for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community UK. The proceedings were moderated by Thierry Vell, President for CAP, Liberté de Conscience, who further elaborated on the significance of the issue. International panel of experts will discuss these issues and highlight what step can be taken by Pakistan civil society and international actors to ensure Pakistan effectively implements the UPR recommendations and its wider human rights obligation. The closing remarks at the event were given by Mr. Mansoor Shah, the Vice President of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community UK. You know that there are two or three deliverables, you know, which Pakistan can deliver. We are not asking for very much. We are saying, you know, treat Ahmadis like ordinary citizens. Give them the rights which are due to any citizen anywhere in the world. Treat us just like any other human being. In Pakistan, we are involved with the Ahmadi community and we have a lot of friends and we are struggling together for the equality and for the dis uh, repeal of the discriminatory law in the country. So for that reason, I was here to listen from the international community how they look upon about this issue. This report is brought to you from MT International. UK Studios in London.